Okay, so I've just switched over. We're just going to do some screen sharing here. I'm in my first machine, which is my uh, home computer that I use uh, for various bits of work and also a little bit of mining on the side. So this machine has a GTX 970 and a Intel i7 950. Um, but before we get onto the actual hardware details and the actual mining, the pool that I'm going to be using for the launch is Supernova. So to get started with that pool, you uh, specifically for mining Zcash, you want to go to zec.supernova.cc and then if you go to help and then getting started uh, this will basically provide all the information that you need to get started mining Zcash uh, with this particular pool so yes Supernova is going to be the pool that I'm using during the actual launch of Zcash and probably mining for about uh, I've used Supernova for quite some time for uh, mining various other coins and it's always been uh, a good reliable pool. Um, the other thing that these guys have also been kind of actively involved in the actual creation of the miners for Zcash and also on other algorithms as well so I kind of like that that the guys are integrated into the mining and the pool kind of operation. It just gives me a bit more confidence that these guys know what they're what they're doing and um, I haven't had any problems so the pool that I'm going to be using is um, Supernova. Uh, with regards to the actual miner that I'm going to be using I'm going to be using the Windows version of this nice hash CPU and GPU miner so I've done some previous videos where the this particular miner was kind of broken into two separate pieces um, and now what they've done is they've kind of uh, pulled together a few different uh, parts and optimizations and they've compiled it into one usable miner. Um, the only thing with this miner is at the moment it's um, hard coded to actually be used only with the supernova pool. You can't change the pool address or anything like that. So that's just something to bear in mind. So this is the download for it, the official download. Um, I'll also put a link in the description where you can download it and that will just have some extra batch files and configuration files just to help you guys get started. So that's that out of the way. So once you've downloaded it and um, extracted it, you will have a folder that looks a little bit like this. Um, these are extra files, um, and if you download using the link in the description, um, I'll add these in there for you to help you get started. So on this uh, machine, like I say, it's got a GTX 970 and it's Windows 10. Um, to get the actual CUDA miner working, I had to update the drivers, so I'm using 372.90. Um, I don't normally use those drivers, I normally use the older drivers, uh, 34788, and they give the best performance when you're mining uh, Ethereum. But in order to use this um, CUDA miner, I um, had to update those, so that's just something to make you aware of. So if you do have a CUDA device uh, specifically, so any of the NVIDIA devices, uh, what you need to do is something a little bit different. So if you run the find CUDA devices, I'll just show you what's in there. So it's just got a call to a miner dash CI and then we've got a pools and I'll just show you what that does. So if you run that, like I said, it's only for NVIDIA devices. It just shows you the number of CUDA devices found one. It gives you the number zero. So that's the number of the device. And also it tells you what the device is. Uh, and that's basically all the information that you need. So now if I go um, and open up the other batch file which will be used for the actual mining. I'll just break it down for you bit by bit. So you've got the call to the miner. This is actually the mining pool but we don't actually need that because it's already uh, wired or coded into the actual miner itself. It's gonna uh, by default connect to the supernova pool. Uh, so what we have is our pool username, then we have a worker name, password is x by default or whatever it is for your actual worker. Then this part, we've got it set to its dash CD. So that basically turns the CUDA devices on and then it tells you which CUDA device you want to use. So um, when I showed you just a second ago with the CUDA devices, it is listed as device zero. So that's what you want to add there. If you've got multiple CUDA devices or like a dual card uh, CUDA system, then you'll probably do like zero and one. So just put the number in there. Then we've got, this is for CPU cores and I've got it set to six. Uh, cores, so that's what it's going to use there. So just save that and I'll just show you that running now. So now it's going to mine on the NVIDIA GTX 970 and also the i7 950. So I'll show you how that looks on this machine. 
So if I just scroll to the top there, I'll pull this down to give you a little bit, see a little bit more what's going on. So we've got the miner, it says it's using SSE2, that's our Intel chip. And then you've got the miner threads. So zero to six, sorry, zero to five is the actual CPU and thread six is our CUDA miner. So you can see it starts to hash away there. I will say with um, the CUDA miner as well, with Windows 10, because of those later uh, drivers, you're not getting the best performance at your um, NVIDIA cards. So if you do have an NVIDIA card and you want to mine this, uh, it might be worth taking the time to use it with Windows 7 and then those older drivers, uh, you'll get better performance. It's just the way they've, um, uh, NVIDIA has restricted the, the actual compute use in the newer drivers. Okay, so that's going uh, through there. So roughly we're getting uh, 25 uh, souls a second, almost. Uh, was it 25 so yeah i'll say that's an average of 25. Um, when i tested previously uh, i was getting around um, 16 just from the actual gpu and the uh, cpu is making up the other um, part of that hash rate i'll just show you very quickly uh, if i just do the cpu only um, oh sorry that's cuda on it let's do cpu only um, so here it's basically the same configuration, but we've just got uh, threads. So if we just change that to six. So this time it'll just use the CPU only. You can see it starts off at the same at the top. So threads zero uh, down to five. Yeah, you can see there that the first sort of hash has come through and it's 7.4, which is about what I was getting before. So that means that our um, GPU miner is getting between around about 18 um, souls a second, something like that. Okay, I'll close that now and then we'll move over to the next machine. So this is Worker Free. This machine has a 280X, a 7950, and the CPU is a AMD A10 7700K. Uh, that's quite a cool CPU because it has some CPU cores, but it also has some GPU cores as well, um, six in fact. So it's quite a good uh, multi-purpose CPU. You can use it in lots of different ways, and so it's really good for uh, multi-purpose mining and stuff. So this machine, I normally use it for Ethereum mining and burst coin mining with a little bit of CPU mining on the side. Okay, so what I've actually just found out is with this nice hash um, EQ miner, uh, the one that I just showed you on the previous machine, it only actually supports CPU mining and CUDA mining at present. It doesn't support any AMD uh, devices, which is a little bit inconvenient because um, it wasn't obvious from the start and I was actually planning on using it for most of my devices, which are actually AMD devices but this miner only supports um, CPUs and CUDA. So that's something to bear in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this for CPU mining, um, this miner, and the other miner, I will use these, um, the miner that was created by Xtremels, um, and they've just done a uh, slight update as well to so support some other um, hardware. So I'm gonna be using a combination of both these miners. So let's get started. So what I'll do is I'll set it to use uh, free threads. So let's get the CPU miner running first and we can see how that performs. And in the other time, we'll uh, open up the Extremals miner as well. So the configuration, I'm just gonna leave it by default. Let's close that, hang on. So the actual um, Extremals miner at the moment, you can only use it with uh, the coins for all uh, because it only supports uh, your address payments. You need to use a Zcash address as your payment address. You can't use any um, login names or worker names or anything like that, for example, as you do with the CC miner. So with this uh, miner, not gonna be able to use it until we actually have a working usable um, Zcash address. Uh, so we won't be able to do that at the time of launch, basically. So at the moment, we're going to do testing with it. So I'm just going to leave that as it is with the default configuration. Let's get it started up just so we can show you the uh, performance. So 
So at the top, we have the nice hash miner, or the fork of it, using the CPU. So that's getting uh, 7.7, 7.5, and 8. So almost 8 souls a second. And we'll just wait for the GPU miner to update. So you can see it's detected three devices. Uh, so that's actually, I'm not too sure what order it is. So it's the 280X, the 7950, and also the GPU cores that are built into our CPU as well. So we'll just see how that performs. Uh, later on today, I'll be looking at another GPU miner. Um, at the moment, it's only for um, AMD devices and Linux installations, um, but it was done by Silent Army. But I'll be checking that later on this afternoon, and hopefully, um, if there's a Windows version of it that gets released, I'll probably be using that at the time of launch. Um, but this is kind of what I'm going with just for the time being. I'll just let it do one more update. So. I will have to do a little bit more testing with these because I'm not too sure how the CPU affects the GPU mining. It might be more efficient just to leave the CPU miner off or use less threads perhaps, um, but that will come with the actual testing. Um, yeah, same sort of results. Um, in previous testing, I think it was a little bit faster without the CPU miner running, so um, I'll have to double check, come back to that and do a little bit more testing. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the next machine. Okay, so we're on to our next machine now. This machine has two Sapphire RX 470s and they both have the modified BIOS which uh, helps increase the Ethereum mining speed. So this is what I'm getting with the, so I'm going to use the Extremals uh, miner again and I've already started that up just to get it running ahead because it takes a, a couple of uh, minutes to kind of get going. So you can see for each one of the actual uh, GPUs, we're getting 17.7 and 17.5 uh, on the other one, 17.3 uh, and 18.3. So that's a, a fairly good average uh, there. So for, that's for the GPUs. Um, the actual CPU in this machine is a Xeon, an old one, a 5450 uh, from memory. So let's um, start up the actual CPU mining and we'll see how that uh, affects things. So uh, this Xeon processor it has four cores, uh, so I'll just run it on three. And what I want to see is uh, if it affects this uh, GPU mining client. So let's run that and we'll see what happens. So you can see the CPU miner has just got started and that's on Three threads. Okay, so we've got the first sort of uh, readout. It's 2.25 uh, souls a second, which is um, really slow, actually. It is an old CPU, but it might be probably not worth maybe using it at all. Uh, probably be just burning up electricity uh, without really providing any real results. Um, for comparison on the previous machine, we was getting three cells a second just on a single core, so it's it's quite a bit slower than the previous machine. Um, but really what I wanted to check was how um, the CPU miner kind of affects the GPU miner, and by the looks of it, it doesn't appear to be affecting it too much. I'll just let it do um, another update and we'll see um, how that looks. Okay, so we've had a couple more readouts. It looks like it might be affecting it a little bit, but not too much. Um, like I say, I think on this particular machine, um, as with the others, um, obviously a great more deal of testing is required to kind of get it up and tweak to a, a more of an optimized situation. But I think in this case, I probably won't run the CPU miner um, just because it is quite slow and it does appear to be having a slight effect on the GPU miner as well. So I probably on this machine, I probably won't run their CPU miner. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the next machine and we'll see how that performs. Okay, so we're on to our next machine now. This one is called the El Cheapo, which is the one that has the four R7-370s in there. Um, it's also combined with a Celeron uh, processor. I think it's a 18G1840 uh, Celeron. Um, I'm not expecting great results from the actual uh, CPU itself, 
But let's get started with the GPU miner. So as before, GPU miner is extreme rules. Uh, we're just gonna leave the configuration as it is, uh, just really for testing purposes. So let's start up the GPU miner on our four R7370s and see what results uh, these produce us. Might take a little while to get going because it's got to create a bin file for each one of the GPUs. That appears to be going normal. We've connected to the pool. Okay, so we've just had our first update and we're getting around six, six and a half uh, solutions a second uh, for each of the GPUs. I'll just give it a little bit more time so we can kind of get a better average. Okay, so we've had a few updates now and it's looking like we're getting around 6.3 um, thereabouts for each of the actual GPUs. Uh, that one is running a little bit faster. I can't really give a good reason for that. Um, but yeah, 6.3, 6.5 maybe. So what I'll do is I'll just minimize that just because of the screen resolution. Um, let's try the actual CPU miner. Um, it's a Celeron processor, so it only has two cores. I'll just run this on one of the cores. Not really expecting anything spectacular. But we'll take a look and just see how it performs. Okay, 1.6, that's actually better than I expected. Um, certainly better than our uh, Xeon processor in the other machine uh, on a, a core by core basis. And what I want to check is um, just whether it affects the speed of the GPU miner. So we're currently on 13, I'll let it have one more update. Okay guys, I think we'll leave it there for this one. Um, I've been waiting for quite a while and I'm just not getting an update. So I don't know whether that's because uh, the shares uh, not been accepted or the miner has crashed, I'm not too sure, but I'm not really prepared to wait any longer. So I'm gonna close this down and uh, wrap this up. Okay, so that's just about it for this video. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, watching as I kind of uh, share a few of my rigs uh, with you guys. The miners that I'm going to be using uh, and how I'm going to be using them on which pools and the performance that I'm getting on each one of those um, systems. So hopefully you can use this information uh, within your own sort of mining setups and it's uh, good useful information for you guys. Uh, so a couple other things just on the sort of um, the end of this video here. Um, I've received a few tips um, in the last couple of days uh, from a few uh, individuals and um, some in Bitcoin some in Ethereum so I just want to say Thanks a lot. I really appreciate your guys' um, support. Um, not only sort of uh, monetarily, um, you know, obviously I really appreciate those tips and they're all going to be spent back on the channel, so that's great. Um, but I, I really appreciate your support in general. Um, you know, all the likes, the comments, um, shares and all that sort of stuff. And um, that's really great motivation for me um, to make these videos and, and share more of this kind of uh, content with you. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for that. I really do, do appreciate it. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, and I'll just leave it there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.